In this video, I create an action game in 10 minutes, then another in one hour, and finally in one day. We'll see how far I can go, what I can come up with, the world and characters I build in each version. How much can a developer do in a handful of minutes? Also, a huge thanks to Unity for sponsoring this video. Unity is the game engine I've been using for more than six years, so it feels great to have their support. The theme for this video is top-down shooter. I've made many of these in the past. In fact, the very first video game I made with my brother almost six years ago was Midnight Fire, a minimalist 3D shooter filled with jack-o'-lanterns and zombies. Then there was Mario Madness, the fire of belief, the link, the game creation recipe, battling madness, you get the picture. So with all this experience, I'm pretty confident I can get some pretty cool prototypes up and running within these short time spans. So let's begin with a 10 minute version. Okay, so guys, first of all, got my blank Unity project opened up. Start with a timer of 10 minutes. First of all, we're gonna want to create a 2D object sprite circle. Now, we're gonna want to create a little player character controller in literally three lines code. Great. Next up, I'm gonna create another 2D object, this time a square, and this will be my very first enemy. Time is limited, but we can see the player can move, and the enemies are also following the player. So let's create a public. As you can see, I'm trying to be ultra focused here. I think a cool morning exercise to warm up and get into the game dev mood could be a mini competition with your team where each member tries to create a mini prototype in 10 to 30 minutes. You'll think fast, have fun, and there's no time to second guess your ideas or get distracted. Now I think that even the most rough prototypes should be polished just a little. You don't need to add arts, but Unity's post-processing could be an ultra easy way to make your experiment look nicer with a couple clicks. You can add bloom to make certain parts of your world glow a vignette effect for a cool, soft black frame, or even grading to increase the overall saturation and contrast of your prototype's colors. I literally spent one minute here, and the prototype already looks a lot more crisp. It's the thing that needs it. There. No! Okay, guys, that's fine. I didn't have time to finalize the particle effect, but as you saw, we still had a pretty decent little prototype up and running. Let's have a look. So to recap, I was able to add the fundamental elements of a top-down shooter in 10 minutes. Player and enemy movement and health systems, as well as shooting projectiles. Of course, this is extremely boring. So let's see what I can do in one hour. How much better can I make this top-down shooter? So I switched on my timer and repeated the first steps all over again for the challenge's sake. I made the enemies look a little more stylish by making a simple rotation animation on a bunch of overlaid squares. And of course, I could indulge in a bit more or game juice with death particle effects, screen shake, and even a UI pop-up that showcases your score increase. A super simple projectile effect anyone can make is animating a white circle that's scaled up a little and fades out, then spawning that whenever a projectile collides with something. You'll also notice I had time to make a basic enemy spawning system. Here's the code for all devs out there. It simply spawns an enemy every few seconds and also increases the difficulty over time by decreasing the time between spawns after each enemy spawn. I figured why not add a little more movement in the background, so I animated a bunch of circles that simply scale up and down. And to finalize the polish of this mini prototype, I added some post-processing. Awesome. So here we have the 10 minute version. Lots of things missing, most notably scoring, an enemy spawner, and game juice. And I pretty much added all that to the one hour version, which you can see here. There's even three different enemies, which have different health, damage, and speed. It's now time for the one day version. Can I make a really stylish top down shooter? Let's find out. So first of all, squares and circles can be quite cool, but I love creatures and characters. I think it's time to head into Adobe Photoshop and do some drawing. So using my drawing tablet, I sketched, inked, and colored a bunch of monsters and a tiny exotic player. I simply use my three-step process. First of all, make rough outlines of each character, come up with ideas, look at some reference images for inspiration, then make a new layer and clean up those outlines, and finally, color the designs. Since one day is still pretty short, I decided on not making complex animations for each character. Instead, I'll just go for an ultra stylish and minimalist approach, squashing and stretching the monsters to add a little more personality and appeal. As usual, the first thing I coded was the player movement and shooting. I also had time to add a custom cursor, which looks quite cool. Because it's so easy and quick, I added post-processing. Yes, I'm addicted to quick, easy and gratifying eye candy. I wrote a to-do list on things I wanted for the one-day version of the top-down shooter. So more enemy variety, not only from a visual point of view, but also their behavior. A ton of awesome game juice and effects. And finally, implement sounds and music. So I got to work coding the different enemies. We have this slightly deranged looking wizard that shoots projectiles at the player, this tribal cultist that spawns angry puffballs, 
and a confused horror that randomly runs around the worlds. This fat undead and beastly potato simply runs towards the player, using the ultra basic vector to don't move towards function. And just like that, the game world was populated with waves of vicious creatures. I quickly figured out that it felt a little limiting being confined to a single screen, so I scaled up the world, scattered a couple spawning portals, and I had the camera follow the player around using Cinemachine. Then I added juice lots of it. Projectiles and enemies explode in showers of particles, there's a bit of screen shake, not too much though, a red overlay when the player takes damage, and a bunch of cool UI pop-ups for score increases. Kind of started to look like Vampire Survivors, with enormous waves of enemies which you blast your way through. For that extra dopamine hit, there's a very small chance enemies spawn chests and mega shots. Chests increase your score by 100 points. Mega Shot spawns a large ring of projectiles, which clears some space. So I began feeling ultra excited and ambitious, and almost began programming a level up system for the player where he could purchase new powers, health, extra speed, more weapon types, but sadly realized time was quickly running out and there were still sounds and music to add a game over scene and a couple bugs to fix. But I did add a quick dash move which helps with dodging the vast enemy hordes. Now I rarely make sounds or music from scratch. I prefer saving some time by finding great gems online with the YouTube audio library, freesound.org and of course the Unity asset store. Sometimes I make a few minor tweaks in audacity, for example if an explosion sound takes a little too long to start, I'll just cut the empty space. Then to avoid needing to find dozens and dozens of unique sounds, I can simply randomize the pitch of one or two sounds for dozens of unique variations. All right, before showing the final results, subscribe to our channel. We post videos every week about the world of game creation. We make tutorials on programming, game arts, game design, as well as a bunch of dev logs where we share with the community an honest behind the scenes look at how we make games from A to Z. Okay, so here's the final result. one day version of a top down shooter. We get this ultra satisfying action game with a nice variety of enemies, ramping up difficulty and a player that can dash around. I think there's at least 15 minutes of entertainment value here. Perhaps try and beat my high score, which is 3100. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the 10 minute version again. This is what we began with. 10 minutes isn't long, but there was still enough time to establish the absolute basics. Then we have the one hour version. Tried to do my best using squares and circles. There's definitely a lot of potential from an art point of view, even just using standard geometric shapes. And finally, we have the one day version that looks extremely different from the previous two prototypes because I had time to design characters and add more life to the effects. I could of course take this a whole lot further by adding more biomes, enemies, a proper leveling up system with new powers and stats, boss battles, the list goes on, but at least we have a really solid base here. You can download the project files for the entire project using the link in the description. A small gift to the community from the Blackthorn Prod team. Also, let us know if you want this to be an ongoing series on the channel. And if the answer is yes, what is the next type of game we should work on? Should we make a 10 minutes versus one hour versus one day version of a horror game, card game, 3D FPS, multiplayer battle royale, platformer adventure? Just leave your suggestions in the comments. And with that said, thanks so much for watching. Watching. Remember to like the video, it means a lot, and see you real soon. Cheers.